Ah, oh, Phil, it is really nice to see you again, let alone with both of your arms. Last episode was quite the crazy experience. In case you missed it, I went and visited a good friend of mine through the help of Dr. Phil. We went through time or a world jump. I don't really know, but we did go visit B00 and he helped me start planning the front yard, which as you can see, I've been working on. And don't worry, we'll talk about this weird buzzing sensation here. I don't really know what's going on, but uh, we'll definitely take a look at it. But as you can see, let me turn down the moodiness. That's a common tip, by the way. Brightness can sometimes make the game feel a little bit too bright and a little less atmospheric so yeah as you can see I've been working on the front yard and no it is not done and yes I had to stop myself because I went a little crazy and started building off camera but I'm gonna do pretty much all of it today or at least most of it and I just wanted to give you a tour of what I've built so far as you can see we've got an awesome looking tree that's fallen over and is being held up currently by two rocks I'm a huge fan of detailed pieces like this they're kind of very important for trails like we've got here and of course as we go through it you can also see on the other side we've got two very dark trees that create a dark spot here in the center as B00 talked about, it's very important to have kind of contrasting light throughout the forest to kind of carry whoever is, you know, visiting the forest and walking through along the path. And as you can see, as we kind of curl through and there are some lighter spots and darker spots, it just makes it a little bit more curious. But probably the best thing is this, the roots of the tree. You can also see some water particles dripping down because obviously this tree is fresh, probably would have some water dripping down. But there are so many really cool details hidden around this place that are entirely thanks to B00. He has inspired me to no end, and I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. It's just taking a lot of time. That being said, I'm gonna go grab, well, I've already got my axe. I'm just gonna uh, switch to the other clip. Let Roll the intro. I, I don't know. If you enjoyed the video and want to support my channel and help me make videos in the future, consider becoming a member, where you'll be invited to my Minecraft and Discord servers, as well as have a chance to help me with new videos through exclusive community posts. Click the join button below for more information, and also thank you to those of you who have become a member since my last video. There we go. I don't really know what I was trying to say there at the start, but you get the point. I just needed a role to member add so that we could get started. By the way, I just want to say to anybody who is currently a member and you don't see your name on that, I upload the thank you list once a week. And sometimes I forget to do it, and then I have to kind of use the same one to get the video out in time. So. Yeah, but eventually I do make sure to go through everybody. Nevertheless, thank you so much to everybody who has supported my channel. I really, really do appreciate all your continuous support. We have a lot of members, and it's insane. And not all of you are on the Minecraft server and Discord server, by the way, so make sure to email me. There's instructions when you click see perks. But that being said, today I'm going to chop down some trees, and then we're going to build trees. I still don't know what in the world saplings are. <laughs> or at least, uh, you know, we'll, we'll let B00O believe that. See, he needs to believe I'm a crazy Minecrafter, but instead we're actually really smart and maybe maybe we're playing mind tricks on him I don't know but that was a really fun episode I hope you enjoyed it I honestly want to do more stuff like that B00 is someone I've watched for a very very long time so it was a really special treat to be able to not only visit his world but also just hang out with the guy he's a super super cool guy and uh, very fun to record videos with but anyways I'm gonna keep chopping some trees down and continue to make work over in the forest but first actually I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my plans all right, so as you can see, oh man, this looks super cool from here. I love it. Oh my gosh. There's a lot of stuff we're going to have to do though. First and foremost, I want to fix this entire edge to make it a little bit more of a cliffside when you get to this part, whereas there it'll be more of a rolling berm or something. I don't really know what you know you would call it, but basically a whole bunch of coarse dirt as well as some slabs and stairs to get a little bit more detail in there to make it look like it's just a slope of sliding mud and dirt. Followed by that, we're going to load up a bunch of different trees. And as you probably remember from the last episode, B00O showed me a tree design using spruce. I am still going to do that. I'm going to mix that in. So I'll probably begin building that here in just a moment. We're going to kind of splash them around. But I do want to continue doing these deciduous trees because I think they really spruce it up and make it look really, really cool. So... That is my plan, and we'll talk about what's going on here a little bit later. Oh, by the way, look at this. This is, uh, you know what? Uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. That's all. That's all I can say. Stay tuned. All right, I'm gonna go chop some trees down, get some trees built, and I'll see you in just a moment. Can I do this? Actually, let me see. I'm gonna try 
and not die with this, but okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in just a moment. All right, I've uh, I've made some progress. It's looking amazing. I'm super excited with the way it turned out, and uh, we have a leak that I need to repair. As you can see, the ceiling is leaking because it's raining outside, which honestly, I was gonna wait to record this until after it stopped raining, but honestly, it's super nice and it looks really cool. Now the reason I grabbed my bow is because I just saw a creeper and obviously given that I just spent so much, so much time, I'm not even kidding, so much time on this forest, I really don't want anything to blow up. So I'm a little scared to go in there right now, but as you could see, I have officially finished the forest, or at least for the most part finished it. I mean, there's some stuff that we do still need to do, but overall, as you can see behind me, oh, it's snowing, how lovely. It's it's somewhat complete. We've got a lot of different types of trees kind of embedded throughout this place. The pathway is extremely nice, and it's very atmospheric. There's a lot of cool stuff that I've done here, and you know what? I bet a lot of you did not think I could build this way. Sure, I could build structures, but I can also landscape. That's kind of where I got my start, actually. So landscaping is really, really fun. I love to do it, and thanks to B00's tips and tricks, I managed to actually pull off something super, super cool. Now, the funny thing is that he told me not to make every tree custom and just use some trees with saplings to kind of fill it up. He told me that after I finished building. So, yeah, I spent a lot more time than I needed. But honestly, it's worth it because it looks super good. All right, I'm going to wait for the rain to stop and for the creepers to disperse. And we're going to go ahead and do a tour of this lovely forest. Before we begin today's tour, I would like to take a moment to mention a huge thank you to B00 for all of the tips and tricks, as well as the resource pack changes that he has allowed me to kind of steal from his pack. Uh, as you can see, the leaves are a little bit more bushy than they normally are, which is awesome because it works in completely vanilla Minecraft. No optifying needed, which is super cool. So again, huge thank you to B00 for this because honestly, this forest would not be possible without his tips, tricks, and guidance. So, that being said, welcome to my yet-to-be-named forest. I absolutely love the way this place looks. It has honestly truly come together. You'll also notice a bunch of bird noises. I've actually hidden some parrots and bats all throughout the place, put a name tag on them, and it's perfect. The only thing that's really scary is, as you know, parrots, you know, emulate mob noises. So I was wondering why, why I was hearing creeper sizzles. It was really creepy. But as you can see, the forest looks spectacular. There's so many things to look at, so many major features, and I absolutely love it. Now, we do have a lot of different trees to build. I still have to do some blending and a lot of landscaping to make this place look complete. But for now, I would say it's pretty good. I love the curves. I love the cliff side. As you can see, I went ahead and did that. We still have to blend it in, like I said. There's a lot of work, but... It definitely looks good. It looks a lot better than it did. So let me know what you think in the comments below. This is probably my favorite area, by the way. This tree looks super cool, and as you're kind of curving around, it's awesome. But it's a little dark. So what I want to do is put in some path lighting using a daylight sensor so that whenever it's nighttime, it lights up. I think that'll look really magical. But before we do that, I want to build a gate so that it kind of separates this area from that area because I do have plans for this field. But that being said, let me get some resources together and we will get started. So this is where I want to build the gate, right here. I want the pathway to essentially go right through it and lead off into the field. That being said, what we're going to need to do is basically replicate the jungle village wall that I've built because I honestly love that style. You guys know that I'm all about using the trapdoors a little too much, but I got to do it because I think it looks spectacular and it's going to fit the theme of this forest very nicely because honestly, I want this to feel like more of a park because when you walk through, I want it to have that camping feel. I was even thinking about putting tents around the place. Uh, I think that would look super, super cool. But before we can do that, we just got to kind of establish this little fence first. Not for really any reason. It's not going to have any actual true components. I just think it would be cool and look pretty decent. So that being said, now we just need to basically load up the trap doors and figure out exactly where we're going to put these pillars. So I know that we're going to do that. And as you can see, it's going more on this block than that block at the moment. I'm going to cycle between doing that, where on this side it's going to be here. So let me just try and figure out exactly what we're going to do for this, and then we'll actually get it built up. 
Man, spruce trapdoors sure are extremely expensive. I mean, they're not too bad, but when you use them like I do, they are pretty crazy. But as you can see, I've officially built kind of the wall. I mean, it's looking decent. I didn't want it to be too tall or also too far apart. So this area over here is open, but I'll do some landscaping to kind of fix that. Now we need to craft a couple of blocks. And, of course, I have no more spruce wood. Perfect. But first, we're gonna have to chop down some trees because I have no spruce wood. I used it all on the trap doors. All right, we're gonna need some stairs and some slabs, and we will be good to go. All we really need to do is just add a slab on top of each of these posts, and then when we get to the big pillar, we're essentially going to do what we do in the jungle village. And I think it'll look awesome. It looks amazing. I also need to get some dark oak for the actual fence part, but we'll get to that here in just a a moment as in right now there we go dark oak acquired we are looking good i need to craft these into trap doors as well once again another expensive block that i use a little too much but that should be fine i think we should be good with 14 maybe we'll make a little bit more just in case so as you probably expected we are going to do the exact same style that i always do when it comes to gates one side is going to be open and the other side will not I just think it looks good, you know? It makes it feel a little bit more alive, which is awesome, and that's very important in a world, especially a single-player world when you're lonely. Except for when you get to go visit your building buddies. That was uh, that was a fun episode. By the way, thank you to everybody who watched that episode with B-double-O because we had so much fun recording it, and we're kind of already thinking about, you know, other ways we can interact and stuff like that, so it's super, super exciting. But just like that, the wall is finished. Just a couple of decorations here and there, and we'll be good. Actually, let's raise it up just a little bit more. See, I'm glad that I came prepared and actually did more than I needed, except that was the incorrect direction. There we go, and then we'll do two more on this side instead. And just like that, the wall is pretty much done. It looks a lot better than what I originally had in mind, but we're not going to talk about that. This is great. The only thing I don't like is that it kind of disrupts the view a little bit, but that's fine. I want it to be more of an experience once you go through the gate. But who will see it? Because I'm all alone in this world. So now what I need to do is get the landscaping all done, but I'll worry about that on another day. What I want to do is find all the places where we're going to put the lighting and as it gets dark i need to go to sleep and get all of the blocks together for this redstone magicry overall this project should not be difficult at all even for me someone who is definitely not a redstone genius in any way shape or form the only thing we're really going to need is a couple of observers i've got a sticky piston i think we only really need one a redstone lamp some redstone and of course redstone repeaters that's pretty much it and then of course the sensor i just have to remember the crafting recipes i think that's the hardest part throughout all of this but it shouldn't be too bad i think i know exactly how to do it plus we've got some glass in here and then we're also going to need i believe slabs i think we need slabs which the great thing is i've been keeping my slabs lately as you can see here we've got pretty much a good amount of slabs already crafted so i don't even have to craft them and i love that then i think we've got some quartz in here there we go looking good looking good so i think to make an observer you basically have to do this here and then quartz okay i think we're gonna need two but let's do four again always better to be prepared than not have enough of the resources you need we're also gonna need to make a daylight sensor which i think there we go perfect just one of those will do i think we're good i think we might be ready to go the only thing i think we should do now is maybe craft a couple of redstone torches just in case. I think we have everything we need, hopefully, because I'm not a redstone genius, and if I'm missing something, I won't even realize it. But as you can see, what I've done is prepared the service route. We have all the trapdoors connected, which is perfect in case we ever need to do any management. I've got it lit up, which is good. I was thinking about decorating this area, but honestly, Think smarter, not harder. There's no point. No one will ever be down here, including myself. Now, as you can see, it leads to this area here. I'm going to have a service area that allows us to access that, as well as an override switch to turn on the, the pathway lighting whenever we really want to. That way, if we don't want to wait for nighttime to come and have the lights on, we can't. So, that being said, we're going to have the sensor pretty much right here. Now, the problem is that it kind of looks bad, but here's the thing. If you go into a public park... You're always going to see some form of technology, right? Something that's running the park lights, something that's running the Wi-Fi if they've got it. 
you know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not really concerned about hiding this. The only thing that is kind of sad is my original design using the observers does not work. I don't know why it doesn't work, but it does not work. So we're going to essentially have to use a sticky piston here, which is going to allow us to basically push this down, which it currently is. We'll have that set into nighttime, but let's do it that way for now which I guess we can just do the easy thing and have it run redstone down. That'll probably be the easiest solution. So we're gonna need, I guess, we don't really need a repeater for now. Let's just bring this down. And I think we're supposed to have it on this level anyway. So let's connect up the first light. Hopefully this goes well, because if this doesn't go well, I'm gonna be pretty sad. Which now that I think about it, I don't really know if I'm even doing this correctly at all, because it's gonna be a little complicated. Now that I think about it, all right, we gotta have a block here. I know that. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do all of this on camera. We'll, we'll kinda, you know, take some time <laughs> and get it all set up correctly. I guess we could do this. The only problem is we have to invert it, which I guess we could just have it inverted up here. That wouldn't really be a problem. Oh no. <laughs> do you see what I see? The trap door is opening. Oh no, that's not good. I mean, we could always do a pressure plate. I mean, that could work too, just to kind of hide it ever so slightly. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I'm kind of bummed out by that, but I guess this works. You know, I kind of threw every chance at making this place look clean out the window. <laughs> I came into this thinking I was going to have some really nice professional looking redstone, but honestly, this place is already starting to look atrocious. I'm never going to come down here because I just don't want to have to look at it. It's so bad. And honestly, I don't even really know if it's going to work out that well. I hope it does, but it might not. So yeah, just a bit of caution there, but we need to put the lamp there. Good to go. I do have to remove the other trap doors, but we'll do that eventually. Probably going to need more redstone torches. Good thing I came prepared, though, because otherwise that would have been really bad. All right, that works. Just got to get the other ones connected now. I am quite the defeated man. Everything that I wanted to do just did not work out. Oh, man, redstone has wore me out today, but that's okay because we are about to see what it's all about. I got it all done, apart from the fact that I couldn't put the lever in here because, you know, it opens the trap doors. Something I completely forgot about. So I have it here instead. Oh man, mobs are going to spawn down here and it is going to blow up all of my redstone. I've got to make sure that's all lit up. But as you can see, there is a lever, so the override switch is there and it does work. I've tested it. But now for the moment of truth, we get to actually experience the way this looks with all the lights on. I have brightness all the way down, so that way it's extremely moody. And this should look very magical. Any moment now. <clears throat> Any moment now. Watch it Watch it not work. Oh! There we go! Oh man, that looks super good! Super worth it! It may have made me pull all of my hair out, but this looks amazing! Oh, we've even got a park guest. Hello, my friend. I hope you're enjoying your park experience. And that's what it's all about. The experience. And I've gotta say, oh man, and the sunset! Everybody out there, look at this beautiful sunset. And we've got a, just a natural llama. There's totally not a lead on that guy. Oh, and now he's gone. <laughs> this looks amazing. Oh my goodness. I never would have thought this would have looked this great. But it looks so good. In comparison to how it looked before, this is amazing. Ooh, spooky ghost. The magical lead that's floating in midair. Ooh. <laughs> now you'll notice that I didn't put any lights over here and that's because the cabin is a residential area. So there's going to be a normal lamp post over here. I think that will work perfectly, but it's getting really, really dark now, as you can see because of the brightness being all the way down, but it really just adds to the effect of the really, really cool atmosphere that we've created here. So this is an awesome build. I'm super happy with it. Probably the best landscaping I have ever done. So this is super cool. But now we need to go sleep, otherwise mobs are going to spawn. And now that the pathway is all done, we can finally talk about what you've all been waiting for. The end of the episode, if you enjoy- I'm just kidding. I I'm just kidding. I'm going to talk about it. The sparkles and, of course, what's going on over here. So in the last episode, we did a little bit of adventuring. We went to B-double-O's world through the help of Dr. Ville and his mysterious machine. Unfortunately, it seems that we're causing some problems in the multi-craft space continuum. Sheep, man, <laughs> he's here, and he's also in B-double-O's world. At the same time, we've created some sort of duplication. So this is very curious. I don't really know what's going to happen here, but I just kind of wanted to contain him. 
So I don't. Let me know in the comments what you think is going on because here's the thing. Like I said, B Double O did confirm that Cheap Man is in his world as well. So I don't really know what that's all about. Nor do I know this. I do know that this residual magic that's kind of left over is slowly going away. But basically, after using the time machine, or the portal, it's not really a time machine, the machine, the mystery machine, I don't know. It, it, we used it here a lot, so it's kind of created this residual magic. So, yeah. I have a feeling we're going to have to put a tab in this. I mean, like I said, it is slowly going away, which is good. But there's something fishy going on. We're going to have to consult with Dr. Ville. And also come up with a new machine that doesn't quite tear things. Because something is wrong. Something's happening. I just don't know what... And Dr. Ville and I will have to figure it out. Yes, you, buddy. Yes. Yes, you. All right. That being said, that is going to do it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing and turning on notifications to be alerted whenever I next upload a video. Also, I've seen a couple, not many, but a couple of comments about people saying that they're not liking how this has become more of a role play than survival. You'll have to excuse that. I got a couple of suggestions to try out the roleplay stuff, so it's still a little bit fresh. It's going to blend back into a survival eventually. I mean, this episode was pretty much survival. I just want to kind of make a mixture, so I'm just kind of experimenting. Bear with me. I hope you still enjoy and get entertained. That being said, thank you so much for watching. My name has been System Z. You guys have been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.